When is the right time to make comments about people's mobility equipment, and is it ever okay to make those comments? That's what we're talking about on our first story today. G'day there guys, it's your main man Marky, and welcome back to another episode of r slash Am I the Arsehole. Now, if you love today's bloody good stories, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie, and get ready for them, because they're going to be pretty good. Thank you. Am I the arsehole for telling the teacher to stop making comments on my wheelchair? I'm 18 female and have a pretty messed up pair of legs, have had since birth. I can walk, but am an ambulatory wheelchair user. I'm currently due an upgrade for my chair. I've had it close to seven years and it's a bit messed up. It's gotten pretty uncomfortable and it makes noise, but like I said, I've had it seven years and I've grown rather attached to it. We're saving to pay for the new one at the moment. I have one teacher, my English teacher, who constantly makes comments about how banged up looking it is, and gets pretty pissed any time I dare move and it makes noise. She says it's distracting. The comments about the appearance of the chair annoy me a lot because it's hardly going to look brand new after seven years of constant use. She made a comment this morning along the lines of, you know, you really should get a new one. That one looks like it's about to collapse under you. I got really mad about this and I said, you know what? If you think I should get a new chair so bad, you can pay the nearly four grand it's going to cost, or you can stop making nasty comments about something that literally doesn't affect you. She didn't really look at me until the end of class, but the boy who sits beside me said it was slightly asshole as she probably didn't realize how difficult the process was. Am I the asshole? OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the asshole. I might be the prick for snapping at the teacher who only had my best interest in mind. I feel like comments like that don't actually have your best interest in mind, and while it's understandable that you did snap, maybe it was too harsh, but I don't disagree with you, OP. I feel like you shut them up properly and got the message across that replacing that isn't cheap or easy. So I'm with you on this one, not the asshole. Now in the comments, not the asshole. It's bizarre and so rude to comment on someone's wheelchair. Has she just crawled out from under a rock? Of course wheelchairs are expensive. I would reach out to the principal just to be sure she doesn't hold this against you come time for grades. Exactly this and not the asshole. I don't get what the kid next to her was on about either. It doesn't matter what the teacher did or did not know, because ignorance is never an excuse for causing harm. Very often, people expect someone in a marginalized group, like wheelchair users, to assume that everything that is said to them is good intentioned, even if the person was wrong, so the affected person is expected to gently educate them, even if they've heard the same ignorant statement ten times that day alone. In this case, it may have been that the other students hadn't really noticed any of the other comments that the teacher made, and just heard the OP explode at the teacher for one well-meaning statement. He still should have kept quiet though, since even that one statement was out of line. I think of my wheelchair as an extension of my body. If someone comments on how cool it is, I take it like someone saying, wow, your hair is so cool, I love the color, and don't see it as rude. But if someone says, wow, your hair looks like it's just gonna fall off your head, you really should get a new haircut, then yeah, that would be really rude. That's always the rule of thumb that I give people when they ask if it's okay to comment about mobility equipment. But again, that's just me. Some people might not like to be reminded about it at all, but my latest wheelchair costs over $12,000 and is bright candy purple. If people didn't comment on it, I would be sad because I love talking about how cool it is, just like I love when people comment on my purple hair. Not the asshole. Mobility aids are often expensive and hard or slow to get the right fit for the individual. It doesn't take someone with vast medical knowledge to know this. And even if it did, she's an adult and is supposed to be a professional. It's not acceptable for her to pass comment on any aspect of a student's appearance. And now on to the update. Hi there. It's only been a week since my original post was up, but I have an update already. I'm sorry I couldn't respond to each comment, there was a lot of them and I got a bit overwhelmed. I decided to do what a lot of people said I should, and I reported the teacher who made the comment to my principal. But over the past week I've kept note of other comments that she's made to me and other students. 
The teacher is on a temporary suspension while she's being investigated, but since she holds a PhD, it's highly unlikely she'll be fired. The principal was absolutely appalled, but it seemed like it wasn't the first time he's heard about this. I'm just assuming he didn't know the full story. Anyways, that's my update. Not as absolutely mental as some of the ones on here, but it's pretty positive. Now in the comments, great news. Even if she isn't fired, good for you for sticking up for yourself and asserting your rights. If they gave her a suspension that quick, I'm guessing she's going to be real, real close to being fired. Not necessarily. This kind of suspension, usually with pay, is common in public-facing union roles, such as teachers and cops, when there's a complaint or allegation made against them. The person can't continue to work during the investigation, because if it turns out the complaint is true, the bosses would be in trouble for letting this person continue to interact with kids. But if the complaint isn't, then by suspending ETA without pay, then the person would have been punished when they did nothing wrong. So they're in a sort of purgatory during the investigation. So they get suspended with pay until the investigation is over. As a teacher, I can confirm this. A teacher went on a paid suspension while she was investigated for kicking a student in class in front of other students. She left bruises on him and he actually came to my class after it happened. Despite having several students as witnesses and the bruises on the student's leg, the union managed to get it dismissed because there wasn't enough trustworthy evidence. Bruises could have come from elsewhere, student witnesses could have been biased and lying. So she came back to work. However, her contract did not get renewed at the end of the year. Back to the original topic. Even if she isn't fired, I'm glad you stood up for yourself and that you know other adults in your life are on your side. That's something that you can be proud of. It doesn't need to be dramatic to be satisfying. And even if she isn't fired, she hopefully has received the message that her comments were way out of line. Teachers should never comment about how a student should just get a new XYZ, especially in front of other students. People often have broken and worn out things because they can't afford a replacement. I had a teacher with a PhD in high school, and she got fired because she was calling people's emergency contacts late at night to complain that students weren't turning in homework. She saw a student get burned while doing an experiment, this was a science class, and she did nothing, and the student had to wait for their next class to go to the nurse. Never say never. Our next post is titled, Am I the asshole for shouting at my friends for calling my mum a maid? I am Korean, while my stepmom is from South Asia. I was hanging out with my college friends while on a Zoom call. We were just talking crap and hanging out. I was in her home office, as it is pretty comfortable. My mum came in to get something from her office, and a friend of mine joked that he didn't know that I was bougie enough to have a maid, and I found that a bit off-key and racist. They saw a brown woman doing work and thought she was a maid? She's actually a lawyer. I told them that she was my mother, and they started to laugh and make fun of me for pretending to be poor while I was rich. Someone said something like, You don't have to pretend that your maid is your mum. I saw red and cussed them out and yelled at them. I called them a bunch of assholes and morons and told them to go F themselves before cutting the call. I don't like cussing people out and I'm usually pretty laid back. My girlfriend was in the group and she told me that I should have talked things out and yelling and screaming is never the solution and that she liked me for how laid back I was. She was pretty shocked by how angry I got. I know what they did was wrong, but I feel guilty for losing my cool and not handling it in a more peaceful manner. She also said that I should have specified that she was my stepmother to clear the situation up quicker. Edit. All of us are in the 19 to 20 age group. OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the asshole. She was pretty shocked by how angry I got. I know what they did was wrong, but I feel guilty for losing my cool and not handling it in a more peaceful manner. She also said that I should have specified that she was my stepmother to clear the situation up quicker. I kind of agreed that I lost my cool and started screaming. Personally, in this situation, I don't think it matters that you lost your cool and started screaming. They continued to say racist crap like that, and by the sounds of it, they were looking for a reaction from you, and they got that reaction. 
You're a good person for standing up for your mother and trying to clear things. They are just being ignorant assholes, it seems, in this situation. In my opinion, it is more than acceptable to lose your cool while defending your mother and your family. So I'm going to go with not the asshole. Now in the comments, Fashion Busking says, Not the asshole. Your friends sound super racist. Find friends with better personalities who are not flagrantly racist. And edit, OP, friends. That would include your girlfriend. She somehow believes that instead of being angry, that someone should deliver a racist insult at your stepmother, that you should instead coddle them with calm words and understanding. That's problematic, and unlikely to contribute to a meaningful relationship. Understand that you're free to dump someone for any reason, OP. This is the way. I mean, can they seriously not comprehend that a South Asian woman could possibly be anyone other than a maid? That is deeply disturbing. It's especially disturbing that they accused you of being racist. Maybe an email to them clarifying what went wrong would be useful for your peace of mind. Purely because when shouting, people don't always hear what you're saying to them. But no apologies from you. And your girlfriend's reaction is odd. You should specify that she's your stepmother because somehow that would cure their racism? From the sounds of them, it's more likely they would start making mail-order bride jokes than be like, oh my god, can't believe OP can't take a joke. Tone policing when someone is confronting racist stuff is horrible. You have a right to be angry, and your girlfriend getting upset because you didn't handle your friend with kid gloves is gross, and you should tell her that. Girlfriend thinks OP being angry about racist and classist insults is a bigger sin than the people being openly racist. Says all you need to know about her priorities, really. Not the asshole. People love to criticize reactions, but say nothing about the actions that cause them. For real, I know they were being racist and demeaning your mum, but you were rude. About how the people on Reddit vote. Oh, you mean this guy was bullying you? Well, I vote everyone sucks here because you defended yourself and that makes you just as bad. That crap is just bonkers. And not the asshole. Your friends are racist and classist, and your girlfriend should have understood how deeply affected you were by their casual cruelty, especially if you're normally laid back. There was a good meme on here earlier that said, when it comes to intolerance, we don't spill the tea, we throw the cup. Good on you for defending your mum, whether you consider her step or not. And now on to the update. I was overwhelmed by the support I received here. I really appreciate it. However, I did realize that my response was a bit immature, and I should have been able to deal with the situation less emotionally. I did take the advice given to drop this group of friends. I mostly just ghosted them and decided to pick and choose who I will stay in touch with. Honestly, I don't feel like I lost much. I need to be a better judge of character. My girlfriend and I are on a break, and I think I will break up with her. She's a really kind and generous person, but she's also someone who is very timid. From the conversation we had about this issue, what I've realized is that she will never get this. She thinks that the better option would have been to just talk it out with them and ensure that they understand why they were being jerks. I don't want her to speak up for me. I can do that, but at least she can support me when I do defend myself and my family and not try to drag me down. I really loved her, but I don't think I want to be with her long term. Someone advised me to have dinner with my badass mom, and I did make my parents dinner. It was nice. Now in the comments, Hexabear says, Congrats on the realizations. Self-reflecting and realizing where you are becoming incompatible with people is always hard. But I've become so much happier with myself after going through that process a few times. Here's hoping you make some better friends. What a nice update. Good on you for standing up for your mum and yourself. Sorry things don't seem like they'll work out with a girlfriend, but I think you made up for your lack of maturity before by recognising things won't work long term and deciding to end it instead of letting the relationship peter off slowly. And for what it's worth, they acted like total racist assholes and you defended your mum. You don't have to do that quietly or timidly or politely. We all need to stop holding the hands of racist people and start calling them to task. Well done on you for both speaking up and cutting them out. 
and our next post is titled, Am I the asshole for not inviting my sister to my wedding? This might be a bit long. I, 27 female, have been with my husband Jay for over 10 years. We got married six years ago, but only did it through court, and we never had a wedding. We always said later, but timing was not on our side. Well, it finally is. We decided to have our wedding ceremony and reception later this year and invite our closest family and friends. We were doing our guest list and decided that my older sister would not be invited. She has been a toxic person in my life since I can remember. To name a few things, when I started dating Jay, she used to tell him that he could do so much better than me. I've never been someone that wears a lot of makeup, and Jay has always known this. She used to tell me that he was going to leave me because I didn't take care of myself. I've suffered with an eating disorder and have done inpatient. She told Jay that I was crazy and shouldn't be dealing with me and should just leave me. When I was at said inpatient, she tried to use me to get an excuse for her job so she wouldn't have to do something she didn't want to do, all under the pretense of helping with our girls. This was my second day there. When I told her I couldn't, she called me selfish and asked, why couldn't I just do this for her? And didn't reach out the two months I was in there. And just so much more. As the years have gone by, Jay has stood up for me time and time again and doesn't let her run over me. Something I've had trouble with. She hates this. She mentioned one time that he shouldn't get involved in family slash sister matters. We had a traumatic childhood so I felt like we just had to be close. I think it's part of why I had such a hard time cutting her off. Anyways, last Thanksgiving we got into a fight. Jay and I tried to have a civilized conversation and put all differences aside and move forward. Did not go well, and she played victim at all times. Jay and I knew we tried. She brushed it under the rug, and a few days later was back to normal. After that, a month later, Jay had to leave for two months for training, and I stayed home alone with my two girls. She made all these promises of coming to visit us and to keep us company, and so did her husband, my brother-in-law. They ended up coming to our state and then kept making up excuses as to why they couldn't come. She didn't talk to me until she went back to the state that she lives. I was annoyed because they also promised my six-year-old and then just left her hanging. After they went back, she texted twice and I briefly answered once, since I was annoyed and honestly didn't want to get into a fight. A week and a half after the texts, the girls and I got into a car accident. The car was totaled and it wasn't pretty. Thankfully, the girls had minor injuries. She never reached out, never cared. Mum and younger sister came to help and called her on FaceTime, and she gave me an attitude. It was like something clicked and I was just done. She's a negative and toxic person for me, blood-related or not. Obviously, I told my family that she will not be invited, and they know everything. But they want me to be the bigger person just because she's your sister, no matter what. And just be the bigger person again. I've stood my ground, but am I the asshole? OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the asshole. I've always been the one expected to keep the peace with my family. We had a rough childhood, and my mum always entertained in us that we needed to be together. I've always been the peacekeeper, and start questioning myself because of it. Now in the comments, Kettlewise says, Not the asshole. Be the bigger person shouldn't mean inviting the company of a toxic and negative person, even when they are family. Certainly not to an event that's supposed to be a celebration of your marriage. OP is already the bigger person. She doesn't need to do more for that, let alone make her wedding more negative. Being the bigger person is supposed to mean not retaliating and being petty. Choosing to distance oneself from a person after they showed utter disregard for you and your child is being the bigger person in many ways. I don't see OP badmouthing her sister or trying to make other family members take her side, which is certainly the right and non-petty thing to do. Not the asshole all the way. And OP says, that's exactly what I told my mom and younger sister. They kept saying the same thing. She's still your sister. 
I tell them how funny it is that they don't consider my feelings, but are considering hers on my wedding. Their response was just that, what if she calls you to talk then? All we're saying is that she's family. I told them no, and I wouldn't answer, because she does things when it is convenient for her. Emerald BG replies to that, Well, if she's still your sister no matter what, she'll still be your sister even if you don't invite her, right? Not the asshole. Being the bigger person is always a way to just make the more accommodating person do something they don't want to do. Just so others don't need to be uncomfortable. It's your wedding, and the most comfortable people there should be you and your husband. Not the asshole. Be the bigger person equals lie flatter, doormat, so we don't have to be uncomfortable. Your sister is a trash person who has made no attempts to make amends or apologize for her bad behavior. The consequence is she misses out on life events because she's proven herself to make drama out of nothing. If they try to guilt you with, that's how she is, Counter it with, this is how I am. I won't be disrespected on my wedding day. Drop it or drop out. And OP replies, your first sentence made me legit tear up a bit. It's always been like that my whole life. I've had them say that because of my mental illness, they have to walk around eggshells with me. When I asked when has that happened, they said it was when I finally stood up for myself and addressed how what they did made me feel. Well, yeah, that's because they see you as the pushover slash easier one to manipulate to keep the peace. Don't let them walk all over you. They've been letting your sister do it because it means they don't have to put up with her because they assume that you will. Time to show them they're wrong. They can deal with her on their own time, not at your wedding. OP provides some more information in a comment further down, and they say, I wish I knew too. Due to character limits, I couldn't go into detail about everything and could only provide a few examples of things she's done to me. The thing is, she's the firstborn and the oldest. She's always been the favorite. I've accepted it. Even people that know us, like other family members or friends of the family, know she's my mum's favorite. My mum will always back her up and find an excuse for whatever she does. To provide you some other examples, when I was pregnant with my second, I had a high-risk pregnancy. I was about 38 weeks along when she asked me to take care of her dog for a weekend while she moved. I was already dilated, and doctor said I could go at any moment. I told her I could only do those days since I also have a cat and they didn't get along. She kept saying, yes, just the weekend, I'll come over at night and feed him and clean everything. That did not happen. He was with me for a whole week. She did not come once, and I had to clean everything while my doctor strictly told me to rest as much as I can, and since my husband is military, he wasn't here most days to be able to help me. I kept telling her to come, and she ignored me until my husband texted her husband, then boyfriend, that they had to pick him up because I was literally due any day. She came in mad AF, saying, Why couldn't you just do this for me? It was just a few days and now I have to take him back. I've already had difficulties and no one stood up for me. When I explained what had happened, my family just said, She's stressed because she's moving. So, I'm okay with whatever difficulty comes. Honestly, your mother and sister are lucky to be invited. They've been bully bystanders the whole time. And now on to the update. Okay, so first of all, thank you all for all of your comments. My husband and I loved reading all of them and all of your advice. Now, I don't know if anyone wanted an update, but I still wanted to give one. My husband and I sat down and we talked about everything. We are genuinely done with my sister and have no desire to have a relationship with her. Due to the character limit, I couldn't really get into everything she's done, but it has been so much, and for the sake of keeping the peace, I always tried to be the bigger person. But not anymore. I can't keep being the bigger person for others, I have to be the bigger person for me, my kids, and my husband. And that means walking away from such a toxic person. Anyways, I spoke to my mom. I told her that I was done, and nothing was going to change my mind. She has been toxic for way too long, and I won't allow her to do it anymore. At first, she kept saying how as a mother, it hurt her to see her children like that, but I shut it down quick. 
I told her she's entitled to her feelings just like I am to mine, but I won't hear it anymore. My sister is out of my life and she won't be invited. If my mum and my other sister, we'll call her M, want to come, they are more than welcome to. But if they ever mention it again, they are out for good. I also told her not to get any crazy ideas, that if my older sister showed up to my wedding, I would kick all of them out and that I won't feel sorry for it. The conversation went well, and she understood where I was coming from and said she won't talk about it or her anymore. My mum knows that when I'm set on something, nothing can change my mind, so she didn't even try. My mum and M are also on an information diet just because I want to keep things more quiet and between my husband and I. I also don't want my older sister knowing anything. That was pretty much it. We put our deposit down so we're officially having our wedding after so long. Thank you all once again. And now in the comments, congratulations. May I also suggest that you consider hiring or asking several of the guys or strong women in your friend group to be bouncers if needed. Info does get around, and I'm not even implying that it might be on purpose. Your sister might check your mum's calendar behind her back. People who are this self-centered love to make waves. And OP replies, Yeah, my husband and I already talked to some of our friends about that, and for the reception, they need specific tickets to get in. And if the guest doesn't have them, they won't get in, so security will be taking care of that. I love it when someone pushes the boat rocker off the boat. Well done, not the asshole. And OP replies to that, This made me laugh, but thank you. Definitely felt good to finally put my foot down and say enough is enough. I'm sorry that you're going through all this, but I do think that you made the right call. Trust me, I understand. I haven't seen or spoken to my sister in over a decade, and my life is much better without her in it. Frankly, I never want to see her again, ever. I told my parents as much, and they thought that that was terrible, yelled at me, and dragged my name through the mud on social media, and with all the extended family. So now I don't see my parents either. Win-win. Life is peaceful without the crazies in it. Anyway guys, I think that's where I'm going to end today's video. If you did like it, tell me what you thought about it down in the comments below. And make sure to just interact with everyone in this community. I love each and every one of you that I get to see on a daily basis. And don't forget, if you are a Patreon subscriber, I love you. You're on the screen right now with the YouTube members as well. If you see yourself, give yourself a pat on the back. You guys help me continue this YouTube journey. You keep me going. I see you guys everywhere. I see your messages and thank you so much for supporting me. I really love every single one of you. But with that all said, I'm going to be signing off now, guys. I hope you have a good day, night, sleep, whatever you're up to, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.